And even though we are a technology company, we're an information technology business, we're an IT services company, um, we're really in the people business. Um, while we're in IT, so we're in the IT services industry, we're really, we're really a people company by choice. Atrion culture is people. It is the family. Uh, it is this, um, this group that are, are coming together to, to do great things. The following special program is brought to you by Atrion IT Technology, Rhode Island College, Cardi's Furniture, and the Arpin Group. I'm Peter Arpin for Renewable Now, and I want to ask you a question. What are the major tourist attractions in Newport, Rhode Island that make it a worldwide destination? What makes them great? Can we make them last, or will they be lost someday? We know that Newport has survived some tough times and is thriving today. Yet, as you will see here today with our guest, Evan Smith, Discover Newport, Rick Nagel from Fort Adams, and John Rodman of the Preservation Society of Newport County, this city is also facing difficulty in keeping up with the summer swarm of tourists, struggles with traffic, struggles with parking, and the logistics of being a worldwide destination, and they will get choked by too many cars, too many people, if they do not implement change and implement improvements. What they are and what they should be is coming up next when we come back. Welcome back to Renewable Now, show five from the International Tennis Hall of Fame in Newport. I am here with Evan Smith, Discover Newport. Evan, thanks so much for being with us. Happy holidays and thank you for thank having you. us. Thank you. Terrific to see you. Rick Nagel, we have known each other for a number of years. Rick, so good to see you. Good again. to see you too, Peter. The director, Fort Adams. And my competitor <laughs> down at the end there, John Rodman, director of museum uh, and the uh, Preservation Society of Newport County. And, yes, Newport <laughs> County. And let's start with you because you, in fact, have a background in broadcasting. I'm a refugee from radio and television news ah. and very, very glad to be in the tourism industry in Newport, you, believe me. So where were you doing radio and TV? Uh, most of my career was spent in Boston and Washington and was with CBS Radio in Boston with WEEI when it was all news and spent a stint as a White House correspondent in the 80s and uh, so was you've back. Got, you've got some stories. Back, back as bureau chief in the 90s, well, so. You'll have to give me a critique at the end. Um, tell us about your organization. Preservation Society of Newport County is 64 years old and we own and operate 11 historic sites. Seven of them are national historic landmarks in Newport. Great buildings like the Breakers, Elms, Marble House, some lesser known buildings, uh, the Isaac Bell House, Kingscote. Each one of them is an important example of the architecture and the history, not only of Newport, but of an important period in American history. And we see, well, this year we just set a record, best year in a decade, total of 850,000 admissions, making us the fourth most visited museum in all of New England. And it's interesting, so in one of the earlier segments, there was talk about kind of how those uh, buildings, those homes, became owners as far as taxes and upkeep, and that really the Preservation Society ended up stepping in, right, and turning them into the meccas, tourism meccas that they are today. When did that process start? Well, it started in the late 1940s wow. when a group of very visionary women who actually formed the Preservation Society in 1945 began to try and save some of the historic buildings from the colonial era here in Newport. And then over time, more and more buildings became available precisely because they became unsustainable economically. And so through the 60s and 70s, important buildings like the Elms, like Marble House. Some of whom have been in movies, uh, they've been seen around the world, obviously. Right? And most recently in some fabulous ads that you can see on TV right now featuring Victoria's Secret. Right. So there's really a very good economic 
twist, really, right? That became, those buildings almost became a liability, but in the proper hands, managed properly, renovated, and then put into the, the tourism industry here in Newport, have become this huge asset while obviously preserving history, preserving architecture, and telling a story about so many generations. And it's a it's a it's a testament really to the to the job you've done because they are you know just fabulous assets here. Tell us about Rick. Tell us about Fort Adams. Well, Fort Adams is the uh, largest remaining coastal fortification in North America. Uh, it was, if you will, the NASA of its day in that uh, the folks who built it ended up becoming the first uh, general of what became the Army Corps of Engineers and they studied, they tested, they published. When was that? that the, uh, the, fort, the particular fort that's there now, uh, which has been the one of longest standing, uh, was driven by the British burning Washington in the War of 1812, but it being a federal project it took him till about 1821 <laughs> to get started on it. It was manned since 1841, but not finished until 1854. And then it remained in service over 100 years. And then what is the fort today? Today it is a National Historic Landmark, uh, and it is uh, representative of what's known as the uh, third generation of forts. It is, uh, like I said, the largest coastal fortification in North America. And what it, happens out there? What do you do? Uh, we do quite a few things. Uh, first of all, as a, a learning center and as a National Historic Landmark, we do a lot of different kinds of tours, uh, both self-guided tours now as well as a variety of different kinds of educational tours focusing on different kinds of activities. For example, there is a Storm the Fort tour which talks about how uh, a group of people would get killed if they tried to attack the fort by land. <laughs> There's a Life in the Fort tour that talks about what it was like to live there and then sort of an architectural and engineering tour. And then there's uh, concerts? Yes, uh, then, uh, then there's the, the concerts. We are the home to the Newport Folk and Jazz Festival. There are other kinds of programming activities that go on there. How big uh, is, as the, well. is Fort Adams? Well, uh, you know, I actually can't tell you how big it is. I can tell you that I've seen paperwork that says we bought eight million bricks. Uh -huh. The parade field itself, that's the interior field inside the walls of the fort, is six and a half acres. Uh, so basically we can go bowling on a place that's just as big as uh, where we are sitting mm -hmm. today. Uh, there's some approximately 20 acres of outworks immediately proximate to the fort. But then there's an additional um, sort of what we call an armored landscape that extends almost three quarters of a mile, you know, anchored by what is technically known as a, the Southern Redoubt. We call it the Lost Castle because it's been hidden for so many and, years. And when you do concerts, how many people go out there? Well, I believe that the Folk Festival this year sold out uh, at 10,000 people a day. Mm. Uh, the Jazz Festival, as I understand, it came in around 5,000 people wow, per so day. you can handle some bodies. And then we're also host to events like the America's Cup World Series, which also, uh, I think, brought about Evan, you might know the numbers better than I, somewhere between 30 and 50,000 people into the park over oh, a several day period. Terrific. Evan, how does Discover Newport fit into all this? Well, our organization is celebrating its 25th year. For the first 24 years, we were known to the public as the Newport and Bristol County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Do you serve towns, cities and towns outside of Newport? Or we do. We serve do? nine towns. We serve Jamestown, Newport, Milltown, Portsmouth, Little Compton, Tiverton, Bristol, Warren, and Barrington. But that's a long name to say. Mm -hmm. And so after 24 years of no one introducing me correctly, mm -hmm. this past year we rebranded ourselves and uh, we, we call ourselves now Discover Newport, nine coastal towns, one big experience. And what is your primary focus? I mean, obviously you're promoting all of mm -hmm. this, right? You're we are a destination marketing company. Uh, we are funded by the lodging tax, so, so we're a quasi-state organization. And our mission is an economic development mission, which is to promote both business travel and leisure travel. Uh, our staff's job is to literally work in conjunction with the industry to work with all lodging, all attractions, all shopping, all dining, all recreation, all transportation, and all special events as an extension of their marketing effort so that we can together as a team promote our destination because travel is a very competitive industry mm. and there's a lot of people out there that want your travel dollars. Yep. 
and we all work together so that we can represent uh, the destination here. The destination I'm referring to is nine towns, uh, but we're, we're trying to promote promote economic development through tourism. Terrific, you're doing an excellent job. I may have you promote uh, Renewable Now while you're at it too. We'll be right back. At the International Tennis Hall of Fame, it's all about the game, the history, and the legends. You can be part of it all. Tour the museum to learn the history of tennis and the fascinating stories of its legendary stars. Play tennis on the historic grass courts. Witness tennis history at the annual induction ceremony. Thank you so much. Become a member or plan a visit to the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Learn more on TennisFame.com. Faster than a speeding... Bullet. More power powerful than a 600 pound gorilla, able to pack any home in a single move. Look, pulling up to our house. It's a delivery. It's a truck. No, son. That's the Arpen Moving Guy. An advanced mover from the Arpen Group sent to defeat rogue movers and moving giants that provide bad home moves. He delivers customer satisfaction, quality work, and award winning service. For a super move, call Arpen at 800 343 3500 or visit arpen.com. The Moving Guy, saving the world from bad moves, one customer at a time. Cardi's is focused to give you a better night's sleep by working with those who have the same goal like our nation's most recognized sleep specialist dr bruce hi i'm dr michael bruce i'm here at cardi's personally training nairopi's team to assess your sleep habits and needs focusing on my four tenets of better sleep thermoneutrality balance of pressure complete relaxation and tranquil sleep all of which will help you get a better night's rest enjoy an introductory free dr bruce box spring cardi's furniture With us. Can we talk uh, a little bit, John, about this kind of historic preservation? Uh, what has it meant to your organization? What does it mean to, to Newport? Maybe we can define it a little bit and see it in action here in the state of Rhode Island and, and in Newport County and Quidnick Island. Historic preservation really boils down to valuing the past and understanding that there's a lot we can learn about today and where we're going tomorrow. Uh, by studying the past and in fact without doing that we get to be really adrift in terms of thinking about our lives today and tomorrow. How do we see historic preservation? We see it in your buildings, we even see it at, at Fort Adams, right? But how do, we, how do we see it here in the economy in Rhode Island and in, and in Newport? Well I think the important part from the standpoint of the Preservation Society is that we have in our hands a group of buildings that tell stories and by researching the lives of the people who live there, the people who work there, we're able to learn more about what it meant to be an American when this house was built, when this house was being lived in. Hmm. And we learn a lot about the immigrant experience, we learn a lot about the engines of economic growth that created prosperity in America, and we learn a lot also about the ingenious ways in which these people made their houses work. Um, it turns out, for instance, the Breakers was a very sustainable building. Really? It used convection heating. It was an ingenious system that Richard Morris Hunt contrived. And we actually see it experimented with in two of the earlier buildings that he built that are in our collection. So we can actually see the emergence of technology over time. That's a really interesting point. As we've been doing the Green America Hometown Tour, we started in Pawtucket and Woonsocket, and we started to see these beautiful old mills, right? And you kind of got, obviously looked at how we use the river and how we, we, we invented manufacturing. But, you know, did we go wrong? What, what happened on the pollution levels? And then did everybody leave? And then how did we, restore them and how do we use them now and those lessons 
were, are, are amazing because it, there was some incredible technology used and there's some incredible technology that in ways geothermal you, you know you talked about it and we and we look at uh, energy that comes out of the oceans and rivers it goes back a long way what about your organization how do you get more sustainable how do you make positive changes well it's a it's a conscious decision you decide that you're going to be more sustainable so for instance the preservation society of newport county purchases hundred percent of its electricity through energy credits so that we know that every electron we use comes from in our case wind power hmm. so that's a conscious decision another conscious decision we recently had to expand the parking lot for the breakers to accommodate some city mandated changes in parking so we went and decided we were going to build a 100 percent zero discharge capture and recover system underground so all the storm water that hits that pavement stays right there is filtered cleaned and then released as clean water into the environment as you mentioned, we're doing geothermal at the breakers. We have enough water to use a closed loop system. So in the next two years, we will be geothermal cooling and stabilizing that building in the hot, high humidity months. And reducing your operating costs, right? Across the board. Starting to eradicate your dependency on the grid because you're only using it uh, for um, you know, the blowers itself, basically, right? But right? Right. you're drawing out of the Earth's temperature. It's a wonderful technology that I really think needs to be more commonly used. And I think it's, it's a great example because you're doing it on a large scale in a, in a very big building. Rick, what about Fort Adams? How do you get more sustainable in your use of land, uh, discharge, um, in the use of, uh, of energy? How mm -hmm. do you try to migrate to a, to a <coughs> cleaner future? Well, a couple of things have been going on at Fort Adams. First, we have a, a new headquarters building, two years old now, I believe it is, that was designed to uh, Leeds Silver Standard, uh, if I recall correctly. So the building itself is energy efficient, it is insulated, it, it depends on its, its uh, layout against the wind, for example, for cooling. It's not an air-conditioned building. Uh, we have uh, some fairly energy intensive lighting systems in place that uh, against a new wall where we're bringing in lighting we're going with LED lighting and uh, plans are in place to uh, uh, to retrofit some of the existing lighting that is uh, energy intensive with LED. What about working with the city as far as transportation? How do people get there? How do you potentially eliminate some of the, the cars and congestion? And what about waste and waste management? Great question. Um, first of all, the one thing I would like to acknowledge is a great partner we have with the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management. Mm -hmm. uh, those folks are, I think, uh, uh, far-seeing when it comes to how do they do things better, uh, and uh, they're great people to work with for us. Uh, they have done uh, some retrofitting of the parking lots uh, at Fort Adams State Park, for example, to do the natural drainage, rainwater uh, garden uh, uh, remediation. Uh, so that's a very positive. When it comes to some of the more, uh, the, the heavier footprints that, for example, John's building has, we don't have those because a lot of our spaces are, are I don't want to call them architectural ruins because they're much more stabilized than that, but there is no uh, heating, ventilating, air conditioning in most of those spaces. Uh, with that said, we also have some great new members of our board of directors that are taking a look at understanding what the possibilities are for solar and things like that. We do run into some issues with, you know, the National Historical Landmark right. standing of the building. Even the Hall of Fame here, the mm, same thing, yeah. right? The Tennis Hall of Fame. But so uh, you do have those kind of permitting issues. restrictions mm -hmm. issues. But we also have some areas that may not be visible to anyone but uh, uh, the seagulls. Yep. And so for those folks, uh, uh, we're not so concerned. Good job. We'll be right back. I'm Maureen Carey, publisher of Rhode Island Natural Awakenings magazine. I'm excited about our new partnership with Renewable Now. Natural Awakenings is a free monthly publication committed to providing services and information to our community to improve your quality of life physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. You'll find cutting edge information on natural health, nutrition, fitness, personal growth, green living, and the products and services that support a healthy lifestyle. You can find our magazine at health food stores, coffee shops, yoga studios, libraries, and wherever free publications are generally seen. We are locally owned, locally produced, and supporting the Rhode Island economy naturally. You can find us online at rinaturalawakenings.com. Thanks for 
staying with us. Evan, you um, obviously work with a lot of organizations here in Newport, and Newport County, Quinnick Island. Is sustainability a conversation that you have? Are you, uh, do you see changes with hotels and restaurants and all of the, a lot of the entities that you promote? Absolutely. It's actually being consumer driven, frankly, because there's a new trend in travel today which your, uh, your travelers are actually looking for companies that are taking measures towards sustainability and logical green measures. And so they're being asked for. So you see a lot of businesses in Newport and Bristol County implementing these things. The, one of the, the marquee examples or illustrations I could give you would be a company called Newport Biodiesel. Mm. This is a fabulous idea of recycling and reuse where uh, a company and, and some people had an idea to go around to restaurants. And restaurants cook a lot of fried fats. There's a lot of deep fried oil. And this company, Newport Biodiesel, takes this away from them. They used to have to pay yeah. to get rid of it. Talk about the economics And changing, sometimes right? get rid of it in an unethical or unenvironmentally yep. safe way. So here they're getting the product taken away that's going back, being refiltered into new diesel energy that that company can sell. And so a waste product is being sold, and which getting, is fabulous. And making money on it. Mm -hmm. What about, do you, do you feel as though... Um, restaurants and hotels and so forth here in Newport and in the surrounding area. Do you feel as though they have a bent for buying local, uh, for organic foods, for s in, in a way kind of supporting the overall economic growth in this area? Absolutely, but I want to go back to an important point real quick, if I may. Sure. The Rhode Island Hospitality and Tourism Association has a green certification program. And we promote that so our hotels and restaurants will go through that 100-point uh, review. Excellent. And when they become certified, uh, we actually list that on our website so travelers can see the companies that have taken the measures to be the greenest. And that's going to be pretty comprehensive, how they deal with recycled material, right? Mm -hmm. how they mm -hmm. deal with energy, food. That's, that's going to be mm -hmm. a pretty comprehensive program. Do you see that growing? Becoming Absolutely. Every year, another dozen or two dozen companies get fully green certified. And that's Excellent. a very stringent certification. So it's not just green washing where someone's just using a green name. Right. That's a fully um, certified uh, certificate that means that they've really gone through the, the energy steps and other steps necessary for their certification. So on to the food process mm -hmm. now. We're very fortunate in that in the nine towns that we represent, we have a lot of farms. And we really have the best of the land and the sea. You know, we are right here on the Atlantic Ocean, Absolutely. Narragansett Bay, so the harvest of the sea is unbelievable. So I think there is a very keen sense of focus by the culinary world to use fresh fish, native fish from this area. But also you have all these wonderful farmers where you can get fresh beef, lamb, you know, the whole gambit is available through all the wonderful farms that are here. And so you see a lot of restaurants really focusing on the, the farm to table experience and what that means. And that's good for the bottom line. It's good for business, Absolutely. and it is happening, and it's growing fast. So I think that's a really good trend. And there's vineyards as well, right? With we are blessed vineyards. with three vineyards here. Um, Sakana Vineyards, Newport Vineyards, and Greenvale Vineyards are three vineyards, and uh, we also have two breweries. It's interesting to me, too. We did a series of shows with Grossmont, and we had, is it Sweet Menly Farm? Sweetberry Farm. Sweet, yeah, mm -hmm. and they not only obviously you know have the farming, but they're a tourist attraction, right? They're doing movies at night and doing all sorts of things that really enhance, again, they become a destination on their own, enhance the experience here. Well, I think this is a way that farmers are looking to diversify their experience. And we're going to talk more about experiences in a moment. But this is an opportunity where they're, they're doing more than just selling pumpkins at Halloween or mm. just selling Christmas trees at Christmas. They're looking at the total visitor experience. And they're coming, many of them have small shops, small restaurants. Uh, they have. Uh, picking seasonable fruit throughout the year. Um, they have hay rides. They have all kinds of wonderful experiences that people can go out there and get a unique, authentic experience. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking for. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And family are. experiences are key as well. And as you said, travel is very competitive. A couple of quick things. We don't have much time. Uh, you all obviously touch education in some fashion. Um, and you do it in a significant way, certainly. But is that is that purely in, in, in the historic side, the architectural side, or what are the, what are the things that you feel 
collectively you bring to the education process here in Rhode Island? Well, the Preservation Society does it several ways. Obviously, our general tours are primarily about history, but they are about architectural history, and part of what you learn is the ways they used in energy in the houses. Hmm. We actually have a tour called the Servant Life Tour of one of the buildings, which takes you down to see the boiler room, to see the coal tunnel, hmm. to see both the good and not-so-good ways that energy was used when this building was built, but also we talk about ways in which we are improving the use of energy in the buildings. And so even as we go forward with our education programs, we're consciously building energy management and energy consciousness into the education program. We're in fact building a new building on the grounds of the breakers. It also will be a green building, but a laboratory to teach how to use sustainable what technology a, a great, in these buildings. What a great way to orientate kids. We have less than a minute. Rick? Well, one of the big things we're doing at Fort Adams is we're really th rethinking a bit of our educational programming. We're almost positioning ourselves as being, you know, an adventure learning and recreation destination with more hands-on activities that sort of uh, uh, their roots are within the military structure of the fort, but we don't stop there. So, for example, we're putting in a learning and team building center. That's going to be anchored by a zip line. So hopefully Excellent. there's action-oriented kinds of mm -hmm. activities people can engage in. Evan, you get the last word. Um, the future of Newport and tourism, real quickly. Lots of people have been here. We're, we're blessed with welcoming almost three million visitors a year. We have to look at why people will come back here. We have to continue to create unique experiences. The industry has to be focused on trends in the industry. The travel industry is changing, and Newport and Newport County and Bristol County have to stay in touch with what travelers are looking for and do that in a way that is fitting for the local population. Terrific. Thank you so much. We'll be following this. We'll follow up on radio, and I'll be right back with some closing thoughts. Hall of Fame, it's all about the game, the history, and the legends. You can be part of it all. Tour the museum to learn the history of tennis and the fascinating stories of its legendary stars. Play tennis on the historic grass courts. Witness tennis history at the annual induction ceremony. Thank you so much. Become a member or plan a visit to the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Learn more on TennisFame.com. In one show, we bring together the many topics we've touched on over the past five weeks. What are the core assets used by Newport, Rhode Island to ride the wave of their economic expansion? What role does historic preservation play in this effort? And what role does it play in our children's education? Can they do a better job of managing those assets, energy use, and waste? And can Rhode Island, as a state, do the same? But well, we hope, after you've watched these shows, you'll agree with us that they can, that they will. And in doing so, we'll build on a great foundation and a great legacy. Our sincere thanks to Mark Stenning, Doug Stark, and marie McLaughlin, and the entire staff at the International Tennis Hall of Fame for hosting this remarkable series of shows and allowing us to tell you so many wonderful stories. We applaud their success. Come back next week at Renewable Dow to start a new series as we bring you the business side.